So I got a question for you. How many times have you got ready to start a project, thought about starting a project, saw a project that you thought about starting, and this voice popped up in your head? You're not that good. People are gonna laugh at you when you fail. Oh, you're gonna screw this up so bad. Yeah, we all have it. The question is, do you listen to it or do you ignore it and try it anyway? Today, I'm getting ready to start a project that if I'm being completely honest with you, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pull off. I thought I would bring you along for the ride, kind of on how the process works, starting a project that I'm not sure I can pull off, the decision-making process on which steps to use next, what happens when something goes wrong, and I'm just gonna show you everything. So if, we, if I make a major mistake, you're gonna see it. If I fail completely on this, you're gonna see it. So let me show you the project that I'm getting ready to start. For now, I'm calling it the Dragon. I think we got a cooler name coming up for it, but for now it's the Dragon. As we scan over it, you can see that there's some pretty sophisticated, complicated, challenging aspects to this. You know, the part around the face, getting that definition, that's pretty straightforward and pretty easy. The challenge is gonna be all those scales down his chest. There's a hand that, or a, a claw, that's kind of out of focus. When you're painting something like this, it's, it's pretty easy to rely on perspective and just let it fade into the background. But when you're carving it, you're trying to give it a little bit of a dimensionality, 3D-ness to it. Is that a word? I don't think that's a word. 3D aspect to the carving. Well, you've got to address those things and things can't just disappear or be ignored. That's some of the challenges that we have with it. I've already traced the pattern. I've transferred it to the leather. I didn't want to bore you with that. Y'all know how to do that. We're ready to jump in and get going on this. So let's go. kind of got to a stopping point or a decision point, I guess would be a good way to put it, with the dragon. The challenge that I'm running into or the decision that I'm running into is I've got to decide how to do the individual scales. I'm just going to go in with a traditional beveler and I'm, I'm going to make sure the, the leather is cased properly and I'm going to use the beveler to create the edges on the sides of the scales that I want. I think that'll give me the transition. I want a really subtle transition from you know, the center of the, the scale where it's got some thickness to the edge, I want it to fade down because there's some pretty significant gapping between the different scales. And there's a reason for that. You'll see it in a little while. But I think that's what I'm gonna do for now. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna mat the area around the head so we get a lot of definition there. So I'll kind of show you what we're gonna be doing. And if I run into any problems, you know, I'll stop and kind of show you where we're at. But that's the next step.
right, it's day three. The goal for today is to jump in on the dragon and I'm gonna be working on the, the scales on the chest primarily. If we can get that done and get some shape and depth built into the scales, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on the area behind the dragon's head if we can get that far today. So I think I'm gonna change plans just a little bit. I like the look that it's giving me, but I want to be able to slide. I want to be able to slide up under the uh, the scales and create this lifted look. And while this is a cool look, it's not going to enable me to create the lift that I'm looking for on the bottom side of the scale. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my swivel knife, and I'm going to only cut in the bottom and the sides of the scale and I'm gonna leave the top not cut in and that will allow me to get up and under there and that will give, I think that'll give me the look that I'm looking for. So as you can see, we've cut in the scales or I've cut in the scales. Um, I tried to really, really focus on the taper so as it comes back into the upper parts, I wanted it to fade and really taper. So the, the bottom sides of them are going to be uh, very heavily cut in, whereas the upper portions are going to be much more delicate. So the, the parts on the underbelly, we're still going to, I'm still going to use a, a traditional beveler on that. And you'll see how I'm going to separate the scales in just a second. But uh, I think for now, the next step is just to get in there and do it. So we're going to jump over to a time lapse. Quick update, let's go take a look at the uh, the dragon real quick. So as you can see, I made a lot of progress. The background around the head is done. I went through, not only did I background that, but I also re-beveled everything around the head where, where I backgrounded. It was, it was kind of muted and I didn't like it and it needed more definition. So I went back through and re-beveled everything. You can see right there on the horn how much definition it's got. So it's about two o'clock in the afternoon. I've been working since 8.30. Let's jump over here real quick. I'll kind of show you what I'm doing. I want y'all to be able to see the process as I go through it. So let's bring the camera down a little bit. Um, so you're looking at the head upside down. The nose is over here, the eyes right here. What I'm doing is I'm looking for curves and places where I know it needs to be pushed down and back, which will bring the foreground up. And I'm just starting with very basic, very obvious areas. Uh, you might be able to see I've, I've done a little bit right there. You can possibly see the shading there. You can see I did a little bit here. I just started. So, uh, but I wanted to show you kind of what my thinking is here, what I'm doing before we get going so you understand the process. Some of this is just making it up as you go. The, the poster up there that I'm looking at doesn't have anything that really shows what I should be doing here. So I'm just kind of doing what I think I should do. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't.
just found my first mistake. So I've been sitting here looking at the dragon's left wing and I haven't been able to figure out why it looks funny. And I've been, I've been staring at it for four days now and I couldn't figure it out and it just clicked. Now I've fixed one of them, but I'm gonna show you the ones that I haven't fixed and I'll, I'll show you what I, how I'm gonna do that. So uh, let's jump over and I'll show you what the problem is here. I can't believe I did this. So if you look right down through here, I beveled all these scales on this side of the line. Now let's go up here and look at the dragon scales. We always want to refer back to our reference picture. You should be able to tell that they are, they should be beveled on this side of the scale. So there's the line. I should have run the bevel on this side and this side should stand up. This side, this side should be depressed. Now let's go look and see what I did. Yeah, I did the exact opposite. Instead of beveling it on the right side of the line, I beveled it on the left side of the line. Now I've come back in and I've fixed it right here. Once I get the other ones done, it'll make a lot more sense. So the way to fix this is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna rebevel it on the correct side. So I'm essentially gonna flatten this right here. And then I'm gonna run my steep edge beveler in there, which will raise it and it'll make it look more like this. Essentially, I have to reverse what I've already done. So there you go. It's been corrected. It didn't take much. I beveled it on the right side or the correct side. Then I went in with a steep edge beveler and I lifted it. So that gave it the depth and dimension that it needed to sit correctly. So that looks a lot better now. It's day five, I think, and uh, it's five o'clock on a Tuesday night. I'm getting ready to jump in. Probably gonna spend two to four hours working on it. I don't wanna waste a day, so I figure if I can get two to four hours in, then, um, then I'm doing pretty good. I was pretty tired at the end of day four, so I didn't do a video to kind of update you, so I'm gonna do that now. Pretty much what we've done is I've gone in, I've beveled everything so that we've got some good definition on the edges. I've started to work in the shading on the scales. Uh, what else here? I've, I've worked in the webbing on his jaw. The teeth are really well defined. I've corrected the issue with the wing and the scaling there. What I'm gonna be working on right now is adding more shading to the scales and down his chest and into his belly. I think that's probably gonna be a couple of hours work right there. If I can get that done, I'm gonna jump back up to the uh, the spines that run down his back and try to add some depth and de depth and definition to those. So, not much work left to do, almost done. Only about 25 hours worth of work before I start painting. So uh, yeah, it's time to put the earbuds in and get to work.
thought that was going to be a challenge, but I had no idea what I was in for. That was so much fun and I learned so much. Now don't go anywhere. Here in just a second, we're going to cut over to the final results. We're going to show you how the all the tooling turned out. Before we jump over there, part two is going to be painting, 3D embossing, and mounting the leather onto the shield. We're going to use an airbrush, dye, antiques, a few other things. Uh, the other thing before we jump over is if this is the kind of projects and stuff you like to see on this channel, please let me know that by clicking the thumbs up. Maybe leave a comment in the section below. Tell us what you'd like to see us do next. In the meantime, let's go ahead and jump over and look at the final results of Dreams of Dragonfire.